Hey everyone, welcome back to Education is Life, your go-to channel for unlocking the wonders of learning. It is me, Joe Edgo, and today we're diving into lesson 4 of the Arduino Uno R4 Minima Ultimate Training Series, focusing on variables, data types, constants, and hashtag-defined preprocessor directive. In this lesson, you'll understand the different data types used in Arduino. You'll learn how to declare, initialize, and use variables in your sketches. And you'll understand how variables differ from a constant and a hashtag-defined preprocessor directive. It is important that you learn these concepts at an early stage of your Arduino programming journey, since you will be writing programs that run on limited memory resources, like your Arduino Uno R4. And before we start, I'd like to give a special thanks to SunFounder for sponsoring this course and making this learning journey possible for all of us especially beginners. And this Arduino Uno R4 Minima Ultimate Sensor Kit, generously sponsored by SunFounder, will be our constant companion throughout the series. So if you're still looking for materials that can best help you on your brand new Arduino Uno R4 journey, please check this one out. You'll find this on Amazon and on the official SunFounder website. The links are provided below. So now, let's begin. For this hands-on learning session, you'll need the following materials. 3 pieces 1 kilo ohm resistors and 3 LEDs, red, yellow, and green. Or if you already have your Arduino Uno R4 Minima Ultimate Sensor Kit, you can use the LED traffic light module included in the kit. There's no need for additional current limiting resistors because this module already has one. And of course, a breadboard, connecting wires, a male-female DuPont connector, and your Arduino Uno R4 Minima. To begin, let's implement this simple circuit diagram. Notice that this is quite similar to our challenge activity from lesson 3, except in the previous lesson, we used different resistor values. If you missed the previous lessons, make sure to catch up because you have a lot of great learnings to look forward to today. So. I have here a simple program that simulates a traffic light operation. In the setup function, I initialize the mode of pins 2, 3, and 4 as output. And inside the loop function, I turn on the green LED for 3 seconds, then turn it off, followed by a blinking yellow LED 3 times with intervals of 0.25 seconds, then Turn on the red LED for 3 seconds, turn it off, and then repeat the cycle. So, let's see what it looks like in our prototype. As you notice, this resembles to how a traffic light operates. Of course, only a bit faster than usual traffic lights. Now, You'll probably realize at some point that as you include more and more components into your prototype, you'll be writing more and more codes to support the different functionalities of your project. And as you write programs, there are values that you need to modify to attain the desired functionalities. So when you put fixed values into your code, like this delay value for example, how do you intend to change this if ever that after seeing your traffic light operate, you realize that you're not satisfied with 250 milliseconds. What if you want to increase this to 300 milliseconds? If you have this kind of code, well, this is not really programmer friendly. Why? Because you will have to change these values for every occurrence of this delay function. And if you missed something as you change it, then this will cause inconsistencies with the desired result. So, to solve this problem, we need to use variables. A variable is something that we use in our code to represent a place in a computer's memory to store a piece of data. In this case, your Arduino Uno R4 Minima has 32 kilobytes of SRAM. So, a variable has a type, a name, and a value. For example, this statement int short delay equals 300 is called a variable declaration and initialization. 
declaration declares the creation of a variable while initialization assigns an initial value to a variable. You can do it in a single line or you can declare first and then initialize later. And when we use a variable like this, short delay, we can replace hard-coded values in our code. Now, what is the effect of doing this? Well, in the event that we need to change this delay value, like increasing it to 400 milliseconds, we no longer need to change manually every value on this delay function call. Instead, we just have to modify this variable assignment and set it to 400, only once, and it's good. So, let's see what it looks like in our prototype. And it works as expected, with a slightly slower blinking yellow LED. Now, there are things that you need to know about using variables in your code. A variable name can be any valid identifier, which is basically a string of Unicode letters and numbers that starts with a letter, a dollar sign, or an underscore character. However, it is strongly suggested that variable names should always start with a letter. Likewise, a variable data type tells you what values it can hold and operations that can be performed on it. In this example, int short delay equals 400. Int stands for integer. And in Arduino language, which is basically C++, integers can have only whole number values, both positive and negative. And when a variable is declared as an integer type, it means you can perform standard arithmetic operations on it like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so on. It also means that it occupies a certain space in your memory as your program is running. Note that your Arduino Uno R4 Minima has 32 kilobytes of static RAM for program execution. When programming microcontrollers, you don't have the luxury of memory space like your standard laptop computers or smartphones. Now, if you check the Arduino documentation, it says here that on Arduino Uno and other at mega baseboard, an int type stores a 16-bit or 2-byte value. This means that you can assign a number to your variable ranging from negative 32,768 up to positive 32,767. If you want to store a number bigger than this, you need to use a different data type that supports a bigger value, which also requires bigger memory space. Well, a 2-byte integer is true for Arduino Uno R3 because it uses an 8-bit AVR microcontroller. However, Arduino Uno R4 uses a 32-bit microprocessor, and for the Uno R4, an int data type stores a 32-bit or 4 bytes value. This means that when you declare a variable of type int, you can store numbers from negative 2,147,483,648 up to positive 2,147,483,647. Anyway, we'll talk more about bits, bytes, and binary numbers in the succeeding lessons. For now, let's just explore the common data types that you could use like bool, which allows you to store Boolean values of either true or false. This is useful when you have logical operations and conditions in your code. Bool type consumes one byte of memory. The byte type, as its name suggests, consumes one byte of memory and stores an 8-bit unsigned number from 0 to 255. The character type also consumes one byte of memory and it is used to store a character value. The float data type stores a number that has a decimal point. This is useful when storing analog and continuous values, and we will use this when we start using various sensors to receive analog input signals. Float type consumes 4 bytes of memory. And finally, the double data type stores double precision floating point numbers. In Uno R3, this occupies 4 bytes, same as with float. However, in this new Arduino Uno R4, double type has an 8-byte or 64-bit precision. 
So to improve this program, I'll use another variable. For these three second delays, I'll create a long delay variable and then replace these hard-coded values. Now, you might be tempted to create more and more variables as you get used to it. For example, we could use three more variables to store these three pins, pin 2, 3, and 4, like int red LED equals 2, int yellow LED equals 3, and int green LED equals 4 and then replace all the hard-coded values here in our sketch. So, let's test if our program still works as before. And it's good. While this one works and many programmers are doing this, I want you to understand the true purpose of variables and how you should use them appropriately. Variables, as its name suggests, are meant to change their values during the course of program execution. Like in this short delay and long delay variable examples, we could have a code that modifies these values as the program is running. For example, the delay could change its value based on the time of the day or depending on the traffic condition. Well, this will make our traffic light dynamic and a bit smarter. So let's have a simple example here where I will change the value of the long delay depending on the value of the short delay, say 10 times the short delay value. So this makes the long delay 4 seconds long during runtime. Let's test this. And it's good. However, in the pin assignment for red, yellow, and green LEDs, if you don't intend to change these values during the course of program execution, then there is a variable qualifier that you could use, the cons qualifier. The cons keyword stands for constant, and it is a variable qualifier that modifies the behavior of the variable, making it read only. This means that the variable can be used just as any other variable of its type, but its value cannot be changed. You will get a compile error if you try to assign a new value to a cons variable. So the good thing about using cons qualifier in this kind of situation is that it protects your variables from unintentional alteration during the course of program execution. So why is this a good thing? Well, you don't want your pin assignment for the red, yellow, and green LEDs changing as your program is running because they have fixed circuit connections to your board. So if you want to change the pin assignments, for example, use pin 5, 6, and 7 instead, then do it before uploading the sketch. Now, instead of moving these wires to pins 5, 6, and 7, I'll use this LED traffic light module included in the kit. So, I'll connect this male-female DuPont connector to this traffic light module. By the way, the arrangement of this is green, yellow, red, and ground from left to right. And it works great. Now, aside from the const qualifier, there is another thing that you can use. The hashtag define preprocessor directive. The hashtag define is a useful C++ component that allows programmer to give a name to a constant value 
before the program is compiled. This is called macro. Now, why would you consider using these macro definitions in the first place? Well, the most suitable reason is that defined constants in Arduino don't take up any program memory space on the chip. Yes, the compiler will just simply replace references to this constant with a defined value at compile time. For example, instead of using const int red LED equals 5, I'll use this hashtag defined red LED as macro and give it a value of 5. Note that there should be no equal sign to define a value. And no semicolon after the hashtag define statement. So to test if this works, I'll comment out this constant red LED declaration first and then upload a sketch. And as you can see, the traffic light operates exactly the same. So, what can we conclude? If you want to save memory space during program execution and increase compilation time, consider using the hashtag defined preprocessor directive. However, the main downside of using these macro definitions is that they cannot be type checked, unlike a constant variable, because macro definitions are not considered variables. And this can cause problems when your program is trying to determine the data type. So macro definitions are generally useful when creating constants that represent numbers, string, or any expressions. But if you want more control, such as manipulating memory address, using pointers, typecasting, and everything else that you do to a regular variable, you would use const variable instead. So, for your challenge activity, I want you to implement a similar circuit connection where you will simulate a two-lane intersection traffic light. The bigger traffic light denotes the main road and the small traffic light denotes the secondary road. To practice your newly acquired programming skills, write a program similar to this. While the bigger traffic light is green, the smaller traffic light is red. And while the bigger traffic light turns red, the smaller traffic light turns green. Just pay attention to how the yellow light blinks. As it blinks, the other traffic light remains red. And as yellow light stops blinking, it turns to red and the other traffic light waits for a half a second before turning green. Again, Thank you for joining me in this lesson on variables, data types, and defined constants. For our succeeding lessons, you'll learn how to read digital input signals from your Arduino Uno board and use if statements to make decisions. If you found this lesson enlightening, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more knowledge pack sessions, and ring the bell to stay updated. So keep learning, keep experimenting, and always remember education is life. See you in our next lesson. Happy coding.